Jeepers, creepers, have a look at those pixel peepers. Shut up, Ripley. Can't a bat have a drink in silence? My parents, they're gone. Shut up over there. Seriously, shut up. If that bottle's empty, you're in trouble. Today in Inside Craft Show, a GH5 Inconvenient Truth. Can you spot the difference between 422 and 420? That's today on Inside Craft Show. I'm, I'm about to whoop your ass. Today on Inside Craft Show, we're kind of looking at color space. Uh, Jeff and I were having a discussion on a, on a on route to a location one day for a shoot, and we were starting to talk about color space and kind of wondering if you can really see the difference. I mean, the majority of what we watch, here it is. I wasn't just digging in my bum, looking for my phone. The majority of people are watching content nowadays on this, and even though this Samsung Galaxy S8 has an amazing screen, or whatever they say in the stupid commercials, the truth of it is, can you really spot the color space differences? Now, certainly we can when we're in the edit bay, we believe. And certainly Jeff can when he's in DaVinci, we believe. But what's the reality of that situation? Because there's an awful lot of pixel peeping going on. And specifically with the GH5, the great thing is uh, it's a great camera. Now, before we show any of the test footage, I just want to say this. I'm a fan of the GH5. I love the GH5. I love my red. I love the Alexa. I love my email going off in the middle of this conversation. I love cameras and I love camera technology. So I'm not a fanboy of one specific thing. To me, cameras are much like film stocks used to be. I've said this before, Fuji has a look, uh, Kodak had a look, and uh, Ilford had a look, right? So there was three different stocks or three different companies of, of film. I might use black and white in this space from Ilford, and I might use Kodak Vision for this very specific look or Ektachrome or whatever it might be that I'm into because they all had different looks. And nowadays we're kind of just looking for the one-stop shop camera, and then we just make Jeff do all the color grading in post. But in reality, sometimes, the how the camera pulls the light in, how it interprets, how it works, what the color space is, the noise pattern, or grain as we used to call it, that's all valuable information. The GH5 is an awesome tool, fantastic, amazing, and I love it, but so is the RED, so is the Alexa, so forth and so on. You get the point. You've heard me talk about it. What we hope to do with this channel and, and our episodes is enable more creatives to get out there and be creative because that's what you want to do. If not... I highly suggest you get involved in the engineering program and try and truly become like a camera engineer because if that's what you're really obsessed with is all the engineering behind it, there's a hell of a better paycheck in that than there is in being creative. Would you say so, Jeff? Oh, yeah. See? Oh, yeah, as he grades this music video for another nine hours. Here's how the test went down. I shot in a dynamic environment. There's a black chair. You'll see it here in a second. There's a black chair with a, a rug that should potentially more a colorful rug, a color chip chart. I'm wearing a gray shirt. There's a whole lot of like little details that maybe should help us. My skin tone is there to help us, although I'm pasty. Uh, the other thing about being pasty, just kidding. The other part of that is I shot one stop over and then I shot one stop, uh, about a half stop under. So the two sets of brackets we'll see is one stop over, one stop, half stop under, because I want to kind of represent a not perfect environment, right? Because it, that's more realistic. And in this case, I'm realistically wondering, can I physically tell the difference between 422 color space and 420 color space with a simple LUT on it. All I'm doing is dropping a LUT. And the LUT that was dropped on there is the Amira Rec 709 LUT. It is a very basic LUT. So I'm kind of going into this blind straight up. Uh, the footage was compiled onto a timeline. So I literally have no idea what I'm about to look at. Uh, I'm not looking at my computer monitor. I'm looking at our Flanders. So you can see that I'm telling the truth. No edit here, no edit, no edit. Still in the frame, no edit. All right, there you go. So as you can see, I don't know how the focus is. There it is on a timeline, right? There it is. So there are no cuts, there's no markers, there's nothing to tell me anything, right? It's just straight video. Then I'll be viewing it on this Flanders. Look how messy my desk is. I'll be viewing it on this Flanders. It should give me a competitive edge over you folk, but not really. At the end of the day, if I can't spot it on the Flanders, that's just further proof, right? So here we go. Let's watch some footage and see if we can determine what is what. They've all been shuffled. So this first shot is V-Log, clearly. Um, and that's kind of how the test runs. Oh, okay, so then we just jump in and we see it put together with a LUT.
This is the raw footage vlog, a little overexposed on purpose. All right, we're into the next one. I could tell no difference. If I am looking for differences, it's gonna be in the skin for me. It's a little bit harder when it's a little overexposed. Oh. I might call that 8-bit. I don't know, what do you think, 8-bit, maybe? I don't know. I really don't know, I'm not lying. Interesting. All right, so we're into our third piece here. The color does look different. There is a mushiness, a little bit of mushiness in the skin tone, not in a negative way, it's just a little bit more mushy in the graded version. It's really hard to tell in V-Log. V-Log's brutally hard to tell the difference. But some of the detail seems to be lost in the skin when we're on the, on the Rec. 709 version. I'm gonna think that's like an MP4 or something. All right, so then the other thing I did shoot is I shot standard versions. This is straight standard, zero across the board. Um, we cycled through 10-bit, we cycled through 8-bit, we cycled through 8-bit MP4. So these are MOVs, MOVs, MP4s, somewhere in that range. Doesn't mean they're in that order. Man, the skin looks terrible. I overexposed the crap out of this. I mean, part, partly on purpose, we went one stop over. There I am, I'm a great, I'm just a handsome fella. All right, so this spot here, again, looking at this, the color feels a little wonky, but not bad. Also, the detail on the floor is why I picked this particular little setup. The carpet, there's a lot of texture going on to give us away some kind of cl giveaway clues of some sort, even though it's one stop over. Ooh, that's tough. I think this is, I think that was 8-bit. I'm going to say this is 10-bit. Man, that's tough. Wow. All right. So I'm saying this is 10 bit. The other was 8 bit. This is 10 bit. All right, so this is exposed one stop even. So this is one stop even. Uh, I believe on standard color profile. If it doesn't pop to V-Log, that's why. Oh, there we go. V-Log. Look at my cheek and skin area. I'm gonna think this is an MP4. I'm gonna say this is an MP4. I'm just looking at details at this point. I mean, this is brutal. Oh, I'm gonna call this 10-bit. I'm gonna say this is 10-bit. Definitely 10-bit. So this shot right here is 10-bit. Or, I mean, I don't know, but I'm assuming it's 10-bit. Which process of elimination says the next one will be 8-bit. So this should be 8-bit here. This should be 8-bit. It's a little tricky with this light shining in my face, but that's all right. That'll just be my excuse if, if, if and when I'm terribly wrong. Yeah, I think that's 8-bit. All right, so back to standard one more time. These are standard color bits. Uh, I don't know, just throwing a guess out there. I'm gonna say 10-bit. It looks like 10-bit. I feel like it feels like 10-bit. Therefore, this would be 8-bit. Or MP4, but now nah, it looks like 8-bit to me. Looks like 8-bit um, Cinema 4K. So let's look at it this way. Is color space that big of a deal at the end of the day? I think it's gonna always depend upon your delivery. If you're going to the big screen, you're going to a small screen, it's gonna matter. Right now, in this test, I couldn't tell you the difference. Some of those I was just guessing, you know, trying to use as much intuitive competence as I have, um, but I have no clue, and I think audiences wouldn't have a clue. So just keep in mind, if you need to shoot at 4K uh, 60 and it's only 420, don't freak out. If you need to shoot uh, for some reason for latitude and you need to shoot in that space at, at 422, great, it's okay. I just don't think there's any reason to like totally freak out and, and just pixel peep the whole thing, just ripping everybody apart because it, my camera can't shoot this and this camera, because at the end of the day, none of that matters if the story doesn't work 
or if you're not able to convey the shot that helps tell the story because that's all that matters. So if you actually want to know what's what, then join us for the live show, which will be 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. That is Craft Show Live is 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. And so this information will come out tomorrow. We will reveal it all. If you want to see that episode, check it out and we'll have the, the revelation and we'll talk more about GH5 filmmaking production, anything that our viewers want to talk about. It's a community sport. Like we just, our community's great. So you should join us. Subscribe, like, if it's on Facebook or something. And then otherwise, just like check out these other videos and just share, give us comments, tell us what you want to see. Thank you so much. We're out. Is this in focus? This is not in focus.